Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to process an architectural image in Lightroom. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what we're going to be doing. This is the original image we'll be working with, and this is what we're going to do with it in Lightroom. But we're going to bang our heads up against a brick wall towards the end of the process, removing this element here. And for that, we'll go to Photoshop. But these are the scope of the fixes that we're going to be doing in Lightroom. And I'll also show you at the very end how to take it to Photoshop, make that fix, and bring it back into Lightroom. I'm going to start with this fix in the Lens Correction panel because the angles and the lines in this image are going in all different directions. And it's going to look a lot better if it's straightened. Now in the Lens Corrections area, you have a basic tab here. And this offers you the automatic fixes for the building. So at the moment it's set to off. Let's go to Auto and see what that looks like. Well, that's pretty good, but let's just check Level and Vertical and then full. I think that auto or level are probably the best options. Probably level, but I still think that the image now needs cropping and rotating. So I'm just going to do that now. And we're doing that with the crop tool. Just dragging outside the crop rectangle here just to get a good crop on the image. So I think this is a lot better than it started out being. Now this is a JPEG image, so we don't have a lot of room to move in fixing it, but we do want to bring back the sky and we do want to lift this building a little bit because it's looking a little bit lackluster. So I'm going to start here in the highlights. I'm going to bring the highlights down because that will generally improve the sky and it certainly has boosted the sky here now. I can open up shadows in an attempt to get some lightning on this building. I can Alt drag on the whites to pick my own white point, or I could shift double click on the little white indicator in the middle of this slider to have Lightroom set the white point for me automatically. But I'm going to do this myself. And I'm going to set a black point, again holding down the Alt or Option key and just dragging the slider until I start seeing some colors in the image. So I've set my black point and my white point. Now this image could use quite a bit of extra clarity. That's a mid-tone contrast adjustment, and it's really going to bring up the detail in this building. So I'm giving it a bit of clarity, but that was way too much. So I'm going to add about 38 clarity. I'm going to add a bit of vibrance too. So I'm just going to drag on the vibrance. Now vibrance will enhance under saturated colors, and that's what we want to do here. There is a big risk if we go ahead and were to use saturation that there's some sort of bluey green areas in this building here that are really quite unsightly. And so we're only going to just build up on those colors if we use saturation. So I certainly want to use vibrance. I don't want to use a heap of it because I am a little bit concerned about the colors in that building. Let's have a look at tone curve and let's just see if we can get any improvement here in medium contrast or strong contrast tone curve. Well, I'm thinking, no, that's not going to help us here. But I am a little bit concerned because I still think it is slightly underexposed. So I'm going to boost the exposure just a little bit to try and lighten it just a little bit here. So I've added half a stop of exposure. Now in doing that, I've lost a little bit of the color in the sky, but we can bring back the color in the sky using the color tool here. So I'm selecting color. You could also use Hue Saturation Luminance because that's exactly the same set of settings. They're just arranged in a different way. So there's no difference between using HSL and Color. I just like to use Color because it seems to make a lot more sense to me. So I'm going to click on Blue here because I want to just affect the blues. And I'm going to have a look at increasing the saturation because that's helping a little bit in here. And perhaps even dropping down the luminance to make it a little bit darker blue. And I can also adjust the hue. So I can take it a little bit back towards the sort of turquoise or a little bit more towards purple. But in actual fact, I don't think there's much in it here. I think I want to leave the hue exactly where it was, but maybe just boost the saturation and decrease the luminance a little bit just to get that beautiful blue into the sky. Now, if you're concerned about the green areas here, I'll show you how to fix those. I'm going into the adjustment brush here and I'm going to make sure that show selected mask overlay is turned on and my pin is turned on. 
I'm going to size my brush down. Now I can do that by adjusting the size here. Or I'm just using the square bracket keys on the keyboard. I just find that a little bit easier. And I'm just going to paint over the areas that are green. So there's a few areas here that we've got just a little bit more green in this building than perhaps we would like to see. I'm just going to paint over these and I'm going to show you how to get rid of the green in these areas. And we do it by an understanding of what the opposite of green is because if we paint over these areas with the opposite of green, then we're going to negate or neutralize the green. I'm just going to zoom out here. These are the areas that I have selected. So I'm going to turn off the mask overlay so we can see what's happening. Well, what's happening is pretty much disaster because I had exposure, contrast and highlights turned up. But that's OK because at any time I can just double click on the word effect and that just takes all those sliders back to their original position. So there's no loss here at this point. What I want to do is to add back in the opposite of green, which is a sort of magenta color. So I'm going to go here to the sort of magenta area and I'm just looking at the building because I want to see that the green is disappearing. But I also want to say that I'm not getting an overabundance of sort of magenta color as a result. So I'm just going to click away from that. Let's zoom in. And I'm going to go to the before and after on just this setting. So this is the before. You can see the green areas here. And this is the after where we've neutralized those areas with a little bit of magenta. It's subtle, but it has reduced that effect. So now let's just zoom back out again. To bring your attention into the center of this image, I would also add a very slight vignette. I'm going to vignette and I'm going to choose a highlight priority vignette. And I'm just going to drag in the amount just a little bit. And that will be a nice little darkening of the edges in the image so that our eye is brought into the more central area of the image. Now there is one other fix that we need to do and that is to remove this eyesore here. There's a sort of pole sticking out the top of this damaged wall of this church. Now I've processed this image on a number of occasions and every single time I do it, this is the sticking point. This is the point at which I cannot get a fix with the spot healing brush tool. So we've got a spot brush tool here and whatever I do with it, I end up with something that just doesn't work. I really need to clone this area out because I need to bring back in the edge of the building. But every time I clone, I end up with hard edges around the fix. This is one of the few times that Lightroom has actually beaten me, if you like. And the solution is to take it to Photoshop. So I'm just going to right click here and go edit in Photoshop. I want to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. So I'm just going to click edit and I'm just going to render using Lightroom there. So what Lightroom is doing is preparing this image and it's going to, if Photoshop is not already open, it will open Photoshop and it will send the image to Photoshop. Now I had another project already open in Photoshop, but here we are in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the spot healing brush tool because I think it will work here in Photoshop, but I do want to zoom in to the area that I'm working in. So I'm just going to do that now so we can see it really, really clearly on the screen. Again, back to the spot healing brush tool, make the brush really, really small because it just works so much better in Photoshop than for this job it was working in Lightroom. So this is just a very, very small fix. It's imperceptible. You just won't see this at all. But we've had to bring it into Photoshop just to do this because the Lightroom tool just won't work, probably because of the proximity of the problem to not only the edge of the image there, but also in the top of this building. So now that I've done that, I need to head back to Lightroom and the trick here is as always, just choose File and Save. You don't want to do anything funny and certainly do not use File Save As. So now I can close this image down and head back to Lightroom. And when I do the images in Lightroom, you can see that there are now two images here. This is the edited version that has been to Lightroom and back. And this is the unedited version that's still got that pole sticking out the top of the building. 
to see the before and after on this image, we're going to have to go back to the one before it was fixed in Photoshop. So let's just go and have a look at that. Press the backslash key to see the before and this is the after. And of course, then we have the after after when we actually fixed the problem with the pole in Photoshop. So there's a nice architectural fix. This has gone from a sort of ho-hum image into something that really is quite attractive and quite a compelling image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.